So, the United States should have stronger gun control. 30,000. 30,000 gun deaths per year in the United States alone. The United States, gun control is a massive issue in the United States, and the reasons not to have more are infinitesimal. Apparently, just because in a time period where in order to shoot a gun, it takes, you have to do a variety of things that take a total of about 20 seconds to fire one shot, that is, if you were trained by the military, we were allowed to use them. And thus, the Second Amendment was born. Time and technology have progressed, but ethics have not. Gun laws have changed minimally in the last hundred years, where guns have gotten bigger, stronger, and most importantly, deadlier. We need to progress, and until this happens, no one is safe. Upon a simple search for guns for sale, everything, flurries of everything from revolvers to AK-47s threw themselves at you. Triple Gatling guns, only $1,700. Upon selecting a massive assault rifle that was the size of the dining room table it was sitting on, I was shocked by how easy it was to buy it. All that was, you don't need this gun to kill a deer, that's for sure. All that was needed to buy the gun was shipping and credit card information. This is ridiculous. A kid with their parents' wallet could buy this. According to my research, 89% of the United States owns a gun or firearm. This is 40% more than the next country, Yemen a country where every day you, you have massive fears of getting kidnapped and beaten. This is the problem. This is why we have so many mass shootings, because we allow it. I've gone over the, the numbers of mass shootings in the past 15 years, and they are very gruesome. Virginia Tech, 2007, 33 college students heartlessly gunned down by a fellow peer who then committed suicide. Sandy Hook, the most well-known shooting of our decade, when a man got past a security system not unlike Prairie's camera system and ended up slaughtering 20 children and 7 adults, including his own grandmother, when he stole it out of her unprotected gun case. Columbine High, 1999. Two kids walked into a high school with semi-automatics to create this unnecessary act of thievery, stealing lives from innocent teenagers. 13 dead, 27 injured. Fort Hood, 2009. 13 dead, 32 injured. Birmingham, New York, 14 dead, 4 injured. The list goes on and on. I read articles on all these vicious acts of murder. And because of how easy it is to buy a gun, the conditions under which the Second Amendment were created, and in the massive amount of mass shootings that, are, that happen today, this has brought me to the conclusion that nobody is safe until all guns are dropped. My opponent may say, guns make school shootings possible, but we disagree, because most of the people involved in school shootings were mentally ill, including Adam Lanza, the Sandy Hook shooter. This supports our claim because mentally, because no mentally sane person just goes out and sh shooting people after they buy a gun. 90% of the time, the shooter has one form or another of mental illness. Therefore, even though guns make school shootings possible, it is the choice of the person pulling the trigger, not the gun itself. My opponent may also say the Second Amendment was meant for militia troops, but we disagree, because in the Constitution it states to keep and bear arms. This helps us because nowhere does it say anything about a militia. It was intended as, it may have been intended as that at the time, but it's not how, is it, how it has been interpreted today. Therefore, the Second Amendment may have been meant for militia, but that is not how it is today. Guns are merely tools that function to the intentions of the owner. That's a quote from authors Bowman and Newton. The Second Amendment clearly states that citizens have the right to bear arms. Based on my research, owning guns is constitutional. The exact words of the Second Amendment are a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people and keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It says right in the amendment to the office, please. That, that, to the that, office. that the right that it's the right of the people. Our founding fathers wrote the amendments for us to follow. Going against what they wrote would be going against what they strongly believed in. Many have tried to change the Second Amendment but have not had success. Amendments are very hard to change, and over over half the states have to agree. Plus. 
people of the Senate, House of Representatives, and most importantly, the President of the United States. Guns are used for self-defense. That was the whole point of the Second Amendment. Protection. The Bill, of, the Bill of Rights was written for protection of all kinds. Some people who have shot others in public could have possibly been mentally ill. When a person goes out to purchase a gun, the seller is to make sure they aren't unstable in any way. If the person doesn't show it, they could possibly get a gun. Guns are potentially being sold to ill people who don't show it. The mentally ill themselves or others may not know they are ill. Aaron Alexis, the Navy Yard shooter from late 2013, had gotten treatment before, but no one knew he had. There are people with illnesses that isn't known until it leads up to a tragic event. You can easily get a gun in that way. Citizens can get around the system with background checking. A postal worker in California went to her old job address and shot six people in on herself. She couldn't legally buy a gun in California because she had been in treatment at a hospital. So she went to Mexico and purchased a gun there. In our world, people always find a loophole. Background checking is supposed to help these incidents, but there's always a way around the system. Some people do still use guns in a safe manner, for protection or for survival. Police and army need guns to help defend our country. They can only do that if they use them legally. In remote places, they need guns to hunt and survive. How are they supposed to survive if guns are banned? Residents would have to move to the city where they aren't comfortable or take their chances surviving. Using guns takes responsibility. Some people do still have that big responsibility in them. Not all people use them irresponsibly. People who shoot others shouldn't ruin it for those who use them properly. In conclusion, gun rights are in the Constitution of the United States. Some who shoot others could possibly be mentally ill. Many use guns with responsibility. The inadequate shooters shouldn't ruin it for the superiors. My opponent may say the, the, that the majority of people that do mass shootings are mentally ill, and that is why they, may, they do the shooting. However, while this is true for Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, and Columbine High, ne neither of the shootings of the, in Columbine High, there were two teenagers, neither of them were mentally ill, and in Virginia Tech, there was one college student who was also not recognizably ill. Also, if we stuck during very, during, depending on what time period you live in, um, what you actually, what the laws are, vary. If I lived in the early 1800s, slavery is legal. That was constitutional. If I lived in the 1920s, beer is illegal. That is clearly not the case now. If I lived before the 1920s, women and black people cannot vote. We, it is clear that some things that our founding fathers have done have been wrong. They may say that, that by not allowing guns, it would be unconstitutional and against what our founding fathers believed in. However, Alexander Hamilton was one of our founding fathers. He is on the $10 bill. It is very hard to get on money. There are not many people who have done it. But something interesting that I have found is that he believed that we should have a king. Not everything that our founding fathers believed in are right. 